We are now in section 2.7 and uh, the object of today's lesson is to make sure that you understand how to graph uh, both linear and absolute value inequalities. <clears throat> uh, we've been graphing uh, these equations, functions, but graphing inequalities means that we need to understand once we graph what is known as the boundary line or in the case of absolute value, it's actually like two different lines because we make the V-shape. Then we have to understand, because an inequality says greater than or less than, we need to understand which side of the line or lines needs to be shaded to indicate all of the ordered pairs that would make the inequality true. So our solutions to these inequalities will be a range. If there is a solution, then it's it's a range of ordered pairs, uh, more than we could ever count, and we indicate all of those ordered pairs by shading on the graph. So you may remember this from Algebra 1. So hopefully this is just going to be a little bit of review for you. So uh, let's get started. I've got uh, five examples that I want to show you. Uh, first of all, um, this is going to be an absolute value, uh, linear absolute value uh, function, inequality. And uh, it is very important that uh, if the inequality is not solved for y, then that needs to be done first. Very important first step. Now, this particular inequality is already solved for y, but be on the lookout. Uh, you need to solve for y first if necessary. And uh, we'll see in some later examples why that is so important. So this is already solved for y. So I'm going to graph the boundary line. The boundary line would be uh, the way I would graph the equation. y equals 3 halves x plus 1. That's a review from previous this year and uh, what you learned probably last year or whenever you had Algebra 1. So we start with a y-intercept of 1, and then we count the slope, rise over run, as up 3 and right 2. And I'm going to do that one more time, up 3 and right 2. Okay, and that would be considered the points that fall on what is known as the boundary line. And then I pay attention to the inequality. It does not say greater than or equal to. It just says greater than. So therefore, when I get my ruler and I draw this line, I'm going to make sure that it is a dotted line. Okay, so just remember, if it does not say or equal to, then the line, the boundary line that you're going to draw, has to be dotted. And what that means is, the actual points on the line itself are not going to be part of the solution. So any ordered pairs that fall on this line will not make this true. So to indicate, well, what ordered pairs will make this true, um, the way I look at this, there's really two different ways of understanding which side of the line needs to be shaded. Uh, I use the expression greater than is above the line. So for a line that has this kind of slope, the above side would be up here, and the below side would be down here. So using that thinking, greater than is above the line, then we're just going to do some shading, and you don't have to get real particular. I just need to understand that you understand which side of the line needs to be shaded. So that's one way of doing it, and you can always check to see if your answer is correct. Um, if, if you want to know for sure with confidence that you got this right, just pick an ordered pair that would fall in your shading. It really doesn't matter what that ordered pair is. Uh, for example, uh, here's the point 0, 3. It's in the shaded area. Well, let's see if the point 0, 3, x is 0, y is 3, does that when I substitute those values in for x and y, does it make this inequality true? So uh, let's test it. y is 3 greater than 3 halves times 0 plus 1. 
Well, 3 halves times 0, of course, is 0. So 0 plus 1 is 1. So I have a true statement. 3 is greater than 1. So I have confidence that if this ordered pair worked, then all the other ordered pairs in the shading will work. Okay, so if you don't like the idea of greater than is above and less than is below, then you can always do what I call the origin test. Similar to what we just did here, but using the origin is nice because it makes the math really easy. X is 0, Y is 0. Okay, so the origin test says this. Uh, if I let X and Y both be 0, then do I have a true statement? Well, uh, y is 0. This would all become 0 through multiplication. I'm left with the statement 0 is greater than 1. Well, obviously, that is not true. So therefore, the origin cannot be part of the shading. So notice that uh, the origin is on the opposite side of the line that contains the shading. So that's just another way if, if you can either think of greater than is above, less than is below, or you can use this little origin test. And if you have a true statement, then you need to shade the side that contains the origin. If it's false, then you shade the other side away from the origin. Uh, the question always comes up, well, what do you do about greater than is above and less than is below for a vertical line? So let's just take a look real quickly because this will come up on your homework. So uh, remember, a vertical line has the equation of x equals some number, and the number is the, num the point where we cross the x-axis, 8, 10, 11. So this is the line x equals 11. Well, for vertical lines, um, less than, greater than means less than is to the left. This is the less than side. Greater than is to the right. So you don't use that same thinking of greater than is above and below, obviously, because we don't have above and below for a vertical line, an X. So let's just say, for example, if you were asked on the homework to graph X is greater than 11, then here's the boundary line. It's dotted because it's not or equal to. And then we would shade this side, the greater or the right side, the greater than side. OK, so I just want to make sure you're clear because that is going to come up on one of the homework problems. So we're finished with this first example. All right, so let's speed up just a little bit. Uh, this is not solve for y. So remember, very important that before you start jumping into the graph of the boundary line and then try to do the shading, you need to solve this for y first. So my first step to do that will be to subtract 4x from both sides. OK, so I have positive x on the left. It's going to come over to the right side as negative 4x or with subtraction. And then I'm going to divide by 2. Please remember, for some of you that are still struggling a little bit with this, everything gets divided by 2. Okay, and we end up with this inequality. So we need to graph the boundary line, which would be the equation of this line. All right, so we start off with a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of negative 2. So that would be up 2, left 1. Or you could have done down 2 and right 1. This time we have or equal to, less than or equal to. So that's going to change my line into a solid. All right, so I'm just going to do this slope again so I can kind of get a running start. You need your straight edge. Just line up those points. And we have a solid boundary line in this case. Okay, now I'm looking at my solve for y. You do not want to go back and look at the standard form because in the process of solving for y, remember, this could have flipped. Um, if we ended up dividing by a negative number, then it's necessary to change the direction of this inequality. So don't go back and look at this for shading. You need to look at your solve for y shading. And less than for a line that has slope like this, less than means below the line. And so we're going to shade the underneath side. 
So what we're saying by this shading, in case, just to make sure you understand, any ordered pair on this side of the line, if we plug those numbers in for x and y, it will make this true. And the line is part of the solution. Any ordered pairs that actually fall on the line would also make this true if we substitute it in for x and y. So that would be my answer for number two. Okay, now we change. Notice uh, the absolute value. So remember, every time you see absolute value, whether it's an equation or an inequality, we're going to be graphing a V shape. Okay, so we've been practicing the graphs of absolute value functions. And so uh, same thing is true. I need to make sure that the inequality is solved for y, and, and it is. And now, remember the other day when we were graphing absolute value functions, we had a certain way of identifying the vertex. That needs to be done first. So we're bringing back this formula that we rehearsed several times in, uh, I think it was two sections ago. This is how we locate the vertex of this V shape. All right. So uh, M in this case is 2. That's always the number in front of X. B would be a constant inside the absolute value, either being added or subtracted. Well, there is no such number, so B is understood to be 0 in this case. And C will always be outside. It's a constant outside of the absolute value, either added or subtracted. And in this case, that's negative 3. So using my formula, I'm doing the opposite of B, which we said is 0, over M, which we said is 2. And then C, we identified as negative 3. Well, boiling this all down, we have a vertex of 0, negative 3. So let's plot that point. Notice that it's positive in front of the absolute value, so that tells me that we're going to be going upward from this point, this vertex. And to know how wide or skinny the V is, it's really all about this number in front of X that we know as the slope. But remember, since it's absolute value, in, in order to come up with the V shape, we're going to do the slope both as a positive 2, up to right 1, up to right 1. And we're also going to do it as a negative 2, up to left 1. Okay, it does say or equal to the inequality, so that means we're going to have solid lines. It's actually two lines. So we're making our V shape. And don't forget, anytime you see inequalities, there has to be some shading. So don't just stop with the V. If this were equals, I'd be done. <clears throat> but since it's an inequality, I have to show what the solutions are. And I do that by shading. So remember, if you apply that principle of greater than is above the line, well, we actually have two lines here. If you think about this line, greater than would be this way, above. And if you think about this line, greater than is above this way. The less than side would be below. So what we're talking about here then is all of the ordered pairs that exist within the V shape. And again, uh, if you want confidence that this is true, uh, just test the origin. Does the origin x is 0, y is 0 make this true? Well, let's see. If I let y be 0, and I also let x be 0, 2 times 0 is 0. Simplifying this, I get 0 is greater than or equal to negative 3. Well, that is true. And so the point 0, 0 should be included in the shading. If that works, then all of the other points in the shading will work. Okay, just a little confidence test to make sure you can always know if you've done the proper shading. Okay, uh, two more examples. Uh, remember, solve for y first. This is not solve for y. So uh, let's go ahead first and subtract 3 from both sides. Okay, looks like that. Still not solve for y. 
um, it's solved for negative y. So to make this become positive y, you can either think of multiplication by negative 1 or division by negative 1. Same result. But the thing that you got to be careful with is when I do multiply both sides or divide by negative 1, it always causes this inequality to switch. Okay, so it's going to make this factor here in front of absolute value become negative. doesn't change anything inside the absolute value, but it does affect everything outside of the absolute value as in this minus 3 when divided by negative 1 will become plus 3. So that has a completely different look uh, from what we thought. We thought we were going to be shading uh, one direction, but as it turns out, it's going to be the other direction. Okay, so this is going to be the upside down V, and this is kind of a review of our previous lesson because this actually represents a translation of the parent function y equals the opposite of the absolute value of x. Remember we talked about this yesterday. Uh, if you don't see a number in front of x understood to be 1, then you're dealing with the parent. So you can apply those principles. It's pretty easy. Um, here's the parent y equals the opposite of the absolute value of x. And what this says is let's take that parent and move it one place to the left and then three places up okay just just like last night's homework uh, you don't have to draw this parent but i'm just using this as an example to review a little bit uh, yesterday's lesson so every point on this upside down v we're going to shift or the fancy word is translate left one and up three and that produces this V-shape. All right, so I'll just go ahead and erase this parent, the blue, because we're just going to sketch this as our boundary V, and it's going to be dotted because it doesn't say or equal to. So let's change, let me get to my line here, change it to a dash. All right, and so here's the boundary. And now we just have to decide where are we going to shade. And again, you need to go to your solve for y inequality. Don't go back up here and look at greater than. Go to your solve for y inequality, and that will tell you which side to shade. Less than. Remember, uh, less than is below the line. Well, for a V shape, we have two lines. Below the line for this line would be that direction, and below the line for this line would be that direction. So we basically have these two directions that are going to collide. So everything inside this upside down V shape will represent solutions. Any ordered pair we could come up with in this shading should make this true. If you want some confidence, I won't take the time to do it, but 0, 0 should make this true. And if it does, then all the others do. That would give us confidence that we shaded the right side. Okay, I just have one more. Once again, <clears throat> uh, this is not solved for y, so let's take two steps and get it solved for y. First step will be to subtract 5 from both sides. Okay, there's the result of subtracting 5 from both sides of the inequality. And it's still not solved for y. i got to make this become positive, and this is like our previous example. Uh, I'm going to think of dividing both sides by negative 1, which does make this positive. It changes this direction. This negative 1 becomes positive 1. Remember, nothing gets affected inside. It's like the walls protect everything inside the absolute value. But operations outside the absolute value do get affected. So negative 5 divided by negative 1 is positive 5. Okay, so let's sketch the boundary V shape. And once again, we could treat this like a translation of the parent V. Uh, the parent V is Y equals the absolute value of X. So I'll just give you another look at that. Here's the parent. 
Well, what does this tell us to do to the parent? It says to go two places to the left and then go five places up. Two places left, five places up, and that results in this translated parent function. Okay, two, two left, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, it does need to be a solid V. So let me make sure I'm going back to solid. So here's my boundary V shape. And remember, we don't stop there for any qualities. We've got to show some shading. And always go to your solve for Y uh, inequality to make sure you shade the right way. This is going to be less than. So uh, let me just erase my parent that we translated. So, less than is below the line, and for these two lines, below would be down here for this line, and also down here for this line. So basically, everything outside of the V, any ordered pair that is not inside the V, would be a solution. And if you want to, again, you can test it pretty easily by trying the origin. Okay? All right, uh, that was uh, today's lesson for Section 2.7, and uh, you've got some problems to practice, and if you have any other questions, just let me know.